Last month, I created a realistic Goku and you all loved it. Today, I will try to attempt another realistic animated in Photoshop and today's star is... I guess Naruto is most requested by you all, so let's do it. Just like the Goku edit, I'll create him entirely from scratch using regular stock images and standard photo manipulation and a little bit of digital painting. Alright, without further ado, let's go Kurama mode and let's create. By the way, for all Kurama lovers, I plan to do this scene sometime in the future, but for now, I'll do something simple. Okay, finding a good stock base pose is the most tricky part. I spent almost two days scouring different stock image sites and finally I was lucky I found this one. And you know what this means. Yep, I think it can make a very good Rasengan shot. Once the base pose is set, the next challenge is finding the correct face. There are some pretty strict determining factors apart from making the face look like Naruto. He needs to be a teenager, around 17 years old, as I'm creating him based on Shippuden, match the angle and facial expression of the composition, and probably Asian. Well, I said probably Asian as because of Naruto's blonde hair and blue eyes, I did a little bit of research and I found that maybe he is Caucasian and not Asian. I'm not sure. The whole point of me mentioning this is because I wanted to stay true to the original creator, Masashi Kishimoto. Then again, in my fan art, I would love to create him the way I envision him. But above all, I think Naoto is beyond any race or ethnicity. He's just the guy we love. Anyways, after searching for quite some time, I found this Kung Fu fighter. Let's see what Photoshop magic we can do on him to make him look like Naoto. I fired up the neural filters and I tried de-aging him a bit and tweaked the facial light direction. Then I went into Liquify and tried to give him now to like features. So if you think I destroyed his face, please don't get angry. I'll try to fix him later. For the headband and the hair, I decided to try my hands on digital painting. Well, I have very little idea on the field to guide you on the topic, but I'm trying to get more into digital painting. I simply blocked up the basic shapes with a solid color and then added dark and light values to create depth and shading. I jumped back into the liquify tool to make the face better, but I'm sure I made it worse. I was losing hope but thought about diverting my mind by adding other features like his blue eyes. It's pretty strange that the eyes of this boy matched the angle that I was looking for. So yeah, I patched them in and did some color matching with curls. Next I spent some time painting the details on the headband using a basic chalk brush. Once I was happy with the result, I decided to overlay a real metal photo in overlay blending mode over the metal part. Hmm, how obvious. To make the cloth part more realistic, I cut a small matching piece from the shirt and slapped it onto the strap of the headband. Added some shadows between the strap and the forehead to make it look more realistic. For the fluttering part of the headband, I sampled two areas from the shirt and warped them into place. Time to work on the hair. Initially, I thought about doing it with photos, but then it felt very difficult, so I tried painting it instead. Many of you asked me to give tips on painting the hair, but trust me, I'm also trying to learn digital painting. But I'll go over whatever I did here. I created some basic blocks with a mid-tone color, and then on top of it painted the dark strands and finally topped it with the highlights. I used separate layers wherever possible and it helped control and revisit the different sections and also helped in creating the volume. Even if I started with a hairbrush, I ended up using a regular soft front brush for the entirety of the process. I just kept the size of the soft front brush tied to the pressure sensitivity of the pen tablet, so when I draw the strands, they kinda taper out. And 
yes, instead of fixing the face, I destroyed it even more. Please bear with me, it will be kind of fine in the end. I spent some more time fine tuning the hair. Here I added some dark shading keeping the layer in multiplied blending mode and some lighter tones on a layer set to soft light blending mode. This kind of created a silky satin like gloss on the blonde hair. With the face marks and some final details on the hair done, now it's time to work on the dress. I used this kid's hoodie as the base for the jacket. You see this fold over here? That is what I needed. I flipped the jacket as it had more folds around the right arm. I used free transform warp to fit it into place and then applied an orange color with the hue saturation colorize. I removed any unnecessary details from the hoodie using the clone stamp tool. On top of it, I clipped two adjustment layers, a desaturated hue saturation layer and a darkened up exposure layer. These will be used to create the black parts. I cleaned up some folds from the arms and darkened them up using curves to match the black color tone with the body. Next I tried to patch the collar area from a separate jacket but something was not right with the neck area and it gave me a lot of trouble to get it right. I quickly added a zipper from a separate jacket and moved on to creating the pants. I thought this would be the most challenging part considering the legs of the base pose but the funny thing is this was actually pretty easy and seamless. Thanks to the time I spent finding the correct stock images. That's why I always encourage you to get your stock images right before you start the photo manipulation, as it will make life a whole lot easier. Once all the parts were nicely in place, I used hue saturation to color them orange. Okay, finally I revisited the face and I think it looks kinda decent after the correction. All I did was, I resampled parts from the starting image and did very little modification on top of it. I felt it kinda looks more like Naoto with a somewhat roundish face. Anyways, you let me know in the comments what you think about it. Here I tried to work a bit on the gesture. The base pose had a nice stretch and pull to the body and mine lacked it. So I tried to warp the jacket area and fix it to the best of my abilities. It indeed turned out to be a lot more difficult than I thought. After that I created the leg wrap and the pouch. It's pretty straightforward, I warped a bandage image to create the leg wrap, then painted the black strap and added a pouch from a gun holder stock. Finally painted the shadows to make everything look cohesive. Creating the shoes was rather interesting. I felt it would be a challenge, but then I found some 3D boot assets over at Envato Elements that I could rotate and match the angle. Then all I needed to do was remove the front part and add the toes. I removed the shoelace and I'm kinda happy with how it turned out in the end. Now all that is left is to replace the right hand so that it matches with the Rasengan pose. With Naoto done, now it's time to work on the background. I went for a standard hidden leaf forest setting with this image and used path blur to create a sense of motion in the scene. I tried several options with open sky, rocky landscape, but a muted green seemed to contrast well with the blue Rasengan and the orange dress of Naruto. 
I added a quick curves to darken it up, then desaturated it a bit with the hue saturation adjustment layer and with another hue saturation layer added a blue color cast on the area near the rusin gun. I also added some additional contrast, painting with light and dark colors on a layer set to soft light blending mode. After adding a dark blue color cast on Naruto using curves, I started creating the rasen gun. I painted it with some varied shades of blue on layers set to linear dodge and color dodge blending modes. The rasen gun has several parts to its design, like the central core, the outer shell, the inner spiraling energy, the spin direction. I tried to pay as much attention to them as I could. I didn't want to go too overboard with it as I wanted to keep it realistic. Also, there is a good chance if I made it too much glowing, then it would have lost the fine details that I added. A quick trivia for those who don't already know, Naruto's Uzumaki clan name itself means spiral, which is their clan symbol, and also this Rasengan is a spiraling sphere. So everything kind of ties in. With the Rasengan more or less done, I started working on the highlights. For that, I filled the layer with black and changed its blending mode to linear touch. Then I started painting with a pale blue color on areas where I thought the light would fall. I also tweaked the underlying layer slider in the blending options to reveal some darker details from the layers below it. With that done, I added some basic color grading, I added the curves with boosted highlights, darkened shadows and lifted blacks. Then I added another curves to add a dark blue color cast and boosted the saturation with a vibrance adjustment layer. I spent some more time working on the lighting of the face, I felt something was wrong and the light direction was not quite right. I let it be for the time being and added a little bit of reflected light from the background as a rim light on the opposite side. I also worked on the shadows, adding them around the folds in the dress and on areas where I think it would catch less light. I decided to add some leaves as a nice particle effect and it would also help establish the depth in the scene. I used path blur to add the motion blur. Also I made some leaves distort and move with the direction of the rasen gun. I just felt tempted to add some wind style Rasengan features and felt it would look cool if the leaves reacted to the spiraling chakra energy and wind. Finally, as I was not happy with the highlights, I discarded it and took a different approach. I added a curves layer in a bright blue tone over the entire figure and then masked it out from the areas where I felt the light would not reach. I thought with such a bright and close to the face light source, the light would cover a wider area. So I took this reversed approach. After spending some considerable amount of time painting the highlights and fine tuning a couple of things, here goes the final result. By the way, whom do you think Naruto is fighting with? Also I think it leaves an interesting opportunity to create the final battle with Sasuke. Maybe I'll try it in the future. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways, if you like the artwork, don't forget to like the video and share it with your friends. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like my overall content. Well then, I will see you in the next video. Until then, enjoy creating.